Yeah, so this is $990. Okay. So this so is this is their high end. This is their higher end or midline uh, line of guitars. This week on Guitar Hunters, Marty and Philip are on the search for the perfect beginner guitar. Nothing's worse than an instrument that doesn't stay in tune. Marty is a professional guitar sniffer, and Philip is an expert instrument pointer. Together they have a budget of only $200. You know, a beginner budget, starter sure. level. Marty wants his guitar to have a certain wow factor. First time but buyers. This is a kind slash has. Will the more practical Philip rein him in? Will they find an instrument that satisfies Marty's desire to play and Philip's more technical approach? Stay tuned. Hey, what's up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music, hanging out with Philip McKnight. Hey, everybody. So we're here where I live in Carlsbad, and we're at a local music shop called Carlsbad Village Music. And we're here to talk about coming into a local store and picking out your first guitar. So are we gonna set parameters? I think the parameters are basically coming in and getting your first guitar. You're not sure if you're even gonna stick with guitar, so we're, we're thinking, you know, a beginner budget, starter sure. level. I totally agree. Yeah. I think I'm okay. up for it. Cool, yeah. so let's look around. Yeah, this is not what I would consider the typical small mom and pop inventory of products. We were just talking about this on the way here about our anticipation. Yeah. You're anticipating maybe some kind of line and then a lot of lower line product. Yeah. But what I noticed walking in is they're predominantly carrying two brands. And this is what's interesting to me. The first one is Tajima, which is this brand of stuff right here. Tajima sounds like a Japanese brand, but it's actually from Brazil. So one like this is a very good guitar. 189.95. Yeah, Check that out. so that's like what I'd consider in that first tier price point for a beginner, where you're still getting like a quality instrument. Because really, as a beginner, nothing's worse than an instrument that doesn't stay in tune or sure. doesn't sound right. It's not going to be inspiring, right, to the sure. to the person that's wanting to learn. This is actually the color of the very first electric guitar I ever had. Is that oh really? Sparkly candy apple red. I mean, with your experience, are there electrics that are even under a hundred dollars or like in the hundred dollar price range these well, days? This is the thought I have for about the money aspect. You know, all of us we kind of focus on money. It, logically, it makes sense that if like if a hundred dollars is okay, two hundred dollars is better, three hundred dollars is better, right? That's a yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a fair psychological a fair assessment. Here's how I approach a guitar that is in expensive. First, I don't look at the paint finish. A lot of people focus on how well the paint looks. One thing that they've learned to do, and it's not, it has nothing to do with guitars, it has to do with toaster ovens and everything. When they're making stuff inexpensive, they focus on the first thing you'll focus on, they make that right, and they leave, they mess up everything else. So they'll get the red right, it'll look great, mm -hmm. but then you'll start noticing like the nut isn't cut right, and there's gaps, you know, right? You don't wanna see big gaps in there, you don't wanna see big hunks. Um, I've seen it, and this is, looks great by the way. This is a good way to tell, filling the sides of the frets are a good way to tell. You know, you don't you don't want them cutting your hand, yeah. sticking out. Well, this is one to to uh, sure keep in our checkout box or sure. whatever. I want to lay lay it there. Yeah, versus, sure. And this one, this one's five hundred dollars. Okay, that might be a little higher out of the budget than the average first time but buyers. This is the kind do. slash has. Yeah, <laughs> there's some disadvantages of going this route over the Strat route. You have to pay a lot of the aesthetics on this. This guitar has a lot more visual work done to it, binding, uh, flame veneer, and of course set neck and inlays. So you're you're paying for a lot of visual aesthetic, Yeah. which if you're a performer, it's worth it because yeah, you yeah. want to look cool. Absolutely. And if it matters to you when you're starting out to look cool. Yeah, I mean, looking cool might inspire you to, to stick with it. I think we decided this one all are great, 500 bucks out of the- Yeah, I'd say- yeah. Oh, 209, so this okay. is $10 more. Right off the bat. They look nicer to me than Squires. This is a nicer brand and quality for the price point than Squire. Okay, so we've got uh, two great uh, entry level, 200 range priced guitars. Yeah, and I think that's a fair, I personally think 200 is a fair market price to yeah. start guitars. I know a lot of people fo stay focused on the 100, $150 price point. Yeah. I think it's safe to say that if a company, that's about the lowest a, a manufacturer can manufacture a guitar in yeah. 2019. After narrowing down their choices based on budget, Marty and Philip take these guitars to try them out. What will they choose? Will the mighty Stratocaster style be dethroned as the ultimate beginner's guitar? Let's find out. So we brought our two picks here, which uh, obviously look like Strat style, Tele style. Yep. They're really gonna be apples to oranges, right? I mean, either one you're gonna get some similarities from. Well, this 
this is the part I, I actually enjoy the most. The nerdiness is always fun, but yeah. having you is actually the, the best part of this. I can tell you specs, facts, figures, we can go over details yeah, yeah. all day, but as you know, as a musician, it takes 30 seconds to hold a guitar and figure out it's wrong. Yeah, for sure. I'm curious what you would think of this. If I could pick a humbucker single single for a beginner, I would always pick that just because it's nice to have that bigger pickup in the bridge. Cause, and Yeah, because you want to be able to rock and get that heavy but I think, um, I think a Tele style guitar is a better pick as a first guitar nowadays. Yeah. Uh, as a whole. We're here. So let's see. Uh... Solid. You like it? Solid. I like it a lot. And I have no, you know, no reason other than my own opinion here to say it, but I don't know, 10 times better than a, than a Squire, I think. Again, it, it also looks like the store, I mean, everything I've seen today looks like the stores went through and tuned them and checked them. Everything looks like not only, because this is the important part of an in-store purchase. Not only has it been set up, adjusted, looked after, but of course, you know, people pick them up and try them and then it has to be re kind of looked at again. I think if you're a beginner, whether, whether you've been playing for six minutes or six years, if a guitar pokes you, it's gonna poke you. It, it's it just, you learning guitar is not gonna stop this thing from poking your yeah, hand, yeah. right? So you hold a guitar, this is how you buy a guitar. You don't play it, you pick it up, you hold it. You feel it. Does it feel comfortable? A lot of people will say, well, I don't know how it's supposed to feel. I'm like, well, you know when something isn't comfortable. Yeah. Everyone sits in a chair that isn't comfortable and gets up, right? right? Hold it. If it's comfortable, that's the first, probably what I call the handshake, right? Gotcha. That's yeah, to get yeah. to know the guitar. You put your hand here, you put your arm here, you hold it, you feel kind of in tune with it. Obviously, being a beginner, there's no way you're gonna know, you know what I mean, how it plays. Right. There's just no way. So it's you're gonna have to do a little forecasting, a little bit of, you know, kind of figuring out what we're doing today. I'd like to try that one. Should we switch? Yeah, let's All switch. So we've got two distinct styles of guitars. Yep. We've got what we would safely call the Telecaster style and the Stratocaster style. But what I would say is that a Telecaster style tends to be just a brighter sounding guitar than, than the Strat. And then also you have one less pickup. Right. So you're gonna have different sound differences because right. you're not gonna, you don't get the same choices as a Strat. Right. But why would you think someone would, I, I know this is definitely a twangier guitar. When I when I go back there, like a Strat in the back will still be bright. The, the reality is, is if a person looks at this guitar and they go, oh, that's not my thing. Yeah. It playing good or sounding good is not gonna unfortunately do well. It, it is, it's true. yeah. So I do just think of it as a little bit brighter. Obviously what you think of when you see Keith Richards or a country star, yeah. et cetera, you're thinking, oh, that reminds me of Bruce Springsteen or that reminds yeah. me of Bad Paisley. And if you lean towards those as being your favorite player, you're probably gonna want that. Yep. Now, if you like Jimi Hendrix, right? I mean, he Jeff. did play other guitars, but I mean, he is connected to the Strat forever. And then you also have the John Mayers now, and yeah. then Jeff you have Beck. like the legends, Jeff Beck, Stevie Ray Vaughan, that's all Strat. I feel like a Strat, especially if you're like just starting off with one guitar or a beginner, I just feel like a Strat's just a little more versatile. You can get a, a few more sounds out of it. I could be wrong, but. The Strat is by definition, the most universal guitar built, an electric guitar. Yeah. Leo Fender, when he designed this guitar, he wasn't thinking of anything else other than how do I mass produce it very inexpensively so it's more obtainable in musicians? And what do musicians want based on feedback of making this 
guitar and so there's a lot of reasons why it's it's yeah. also the easiest guitar to modify and also you've got those uh those two like off kilter positions like the, yes i mean they're not officially out of phase but what do you call them position two and, and position four, four. yeah here's a fun fact for you. yes the, very, the strats originally had a three-way switch okay yeah I have there one. is no difference between a three-way switch and a five-way switch I don't know if you know that internally when I'm looking inside of it. Yeah, okay. okay. Here's what musicians did. They figured out that if they took the three-way switch and they just balanced it just perfectly right in between, it would activate both pickups and the 60 cycle hum went away. Mm -hmm. Then later somebody said, well, why don't we wire those two pickups? These are not the same pickup, believe it or not. These two are the same. Okay. And the center is different. Here's what's different. The magnetic field is the opposite in the center. That's what's sometimes referred to, they wind it backwards as well, called reverse wound. Okay. So the importance of the story is, this is essentially a humbucker in those positions two and four. That's why the noise, go, noise goes away. You're activating okay. two pickups. For whatever reason, I like the uh, Strat more. You like the Strat more? Yeah. Maybe a little more. I mean, there's really no reason other than just my instinct, I guess. Nostalgic color based on my very first guitar. Right. And also I just was more inspired by it. And that's probably the most important thing. And so we're gonna uh, make some other content yep. and we're gonna use this kind of as a jumping off point. So we're gonna do some more gear videos with you. And thank you, by the way. Oh, thank you um, guys. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been fun, you know, getting to hang out with you and do these collaborations that we're working on. Also, you guys, I wanna thank Carlsbad Village Music right here in Carlsbad, California. It's so great to go out and support your local shops, even if you don't live in Carlsbad, but come here. They do a great job. We want to thank them again for letting us, uh, you know, come in and shoot here. Yeah, and uh, nice please one. check out Phil's channel and uh, we'll see you in some more videos coming up. Yeah.